Good afternoon, day of Pentecost, full gospel church. So glad you could be with us this afternoon. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for another privilege to once again come together in worship, in praise, in unity, in thanksgiving before your presence. Father, we ask that as we gather here, whether in person or on the virtual setting, that, Father, your anointing fall fresh upon us. Father, we will continue to give you all the honor and glory in Jesus' precious, sweet and mighty holy name we pray. Amen. For our scripture this afternoon, I would like to share with you from the book of Joshua, chapter 5. And I'm going to start at verse 13 and read through verse 15. Joshua chapter 5. Pastor, you need it. Oh. I am so sorry. Let me try this again. It might help if I unmute and turn my volume up, which I did not do. Technology is fine if you follow through the right steps. Do A, B, and C, and everything goes just fine. So, I prayed already and asked God's anointing fall fresh upon us, and so now I'm going to read the scripture for the afternoon, coming from the book of Joshua, chapter 5, verse 13 through 15. Joshua chapter 5, verse 13 through 15. So, it reads as follows. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked and beheld there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as the captain of the Lord of hosts, I am now come. And Joshua fell down, fell on his face, and to the, fell on his face to the earth, and did worship, and said unto him, what saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord of hosts said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereupon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. What is 
this Makes folks say I'm acting strange What is this? Makes me want to love to call his name Whatever it is Oh, it won't let me Hold my peace scripture, I would like to call your attention to two passages of scripture. They're a little bit long, uh, but it kind of goes into where the Lord has been carrying me uh, over the past week. Um, I tell you, um, my cup's still been running over. Amen. And then I've had some God moments. Um, it seems like it's just been one thing after another. Amen. And uh, I just can't put my finger on it. But it's like I mentioned last week about riding a subway or a streetcar or a bus, you know, holding on to the pole and bumping into Jesus at every turn. And it's just... You know, now it's like I'm 
trying to make my way through a crowded vehicle going, excuse me, and everywhere I go, I'm bumping into Jesus. Excuse me, excuse, oh, glory. Excuse, oh, excuse me, glory, oh, glory. That's the way I'm feeling right now because everywhere I turn, something's happening. You know, and I was talking to um, our host pastor a little bit before I came in the church and uh, he mentioned something. You never know who's watching, who sees you. And as I sit on my front porch sometime, and I said, that's my, my place where I go and I sit and I meditate. And um, I've been getting a lot of things done. I finished a second book. I'm working on developing a college course. And I sit out there and I listen to the Bishop G.E. Patterson um, radio, the, uh, the Bishop G.E. Patterson station on Pandora, because I like the music that they play. And um, while I'm doing those things, while I'm highlighting in a book or something like that, and people go by and honk, and sometimes I see the car, sometimes I see who's in the car, sometimes I don't, and they go by, and I just wave, because I said, that's somebody that knows me. Mm -hmm. And so I was talking to Pastor, uh, Pastor Tim in the dining hall when I went back to greet everybody before I came into service, and uh, he said, yeah, he said, and I caught a glimpse of you just as you were getting ready to sit down in that chair. And I said, oh, busted. And everybody bust out laughing. So you just never know who sees you. And, uh, and so I was just thinking just how good God is and all that he's done and all that he is doing. And I had a story, and I'll get into that a little later, as I was sitting one day and talk, talking to my sister about some things. And... And then the sermon topic came up because we've been bouncing ideas off each other quite a bit. But I want to share this scripture with you coming from Acts chapter 11, verses 1 through 12. And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. And Peter was come up to Jerusalem that they of the circumcision contended, contended with him, saying, Thou wentest in to men uncircumcised and didst eat with them? But Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it by order unto them, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance, and I saw a vision. A certain vessel descended as it had been a great sheet let down from heaven with four corners, and it came even to me, upon which, when I had fastened my eyes, I considered and saw four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowl of the air. And I heard a voice saying unto me, Arise, Peter, slay, and eat. But I said, Not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean hath at any time entered into my mouth. But the voice answered me again from heaven, what God hath made cleansed, thou call not co thou common. And this was done three times, and all were drawn up again into heaven. And I beheld, behold, immediately there were three men ready, already come into the house where I was sent from Caesarea unto me. And the Spirit bade me go with them, nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered into the man's house. The next scripture comes from a book.
book in the Bible a lot of people don't preach from. I don't know whether they're scared to preach from it or what. The book of Revelations. Chapter 1, verse 10 through 16. And I'm focusing basically on a similar thing to what I read in Acts when uh, Peter said he was praying. And so I want to go down and focus on the passage in um, Revelations that's very similar. Because in verse 5 of Acts, Peter said he was praying and then received a vision from the Lord. And so I want to focus, the emphasis I want to focus in in Revelations is on chapter 10, I mean chapter 1, verse 10. But I'm going to read down through verse 16. These words from John in the book of Revelation. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in, in Asia, unto Ephesus, Samarna, unto Samarna, unto Pergamos, and unto Thyra, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And I, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and the girt about the paps with a girdle, with a golden girdle, and his head and his hairs were white like wool, and as white as snow. His eyes were as a flame of fire, his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters, and he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two edge sword and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength and my topic this afternoon while minding my Holy Ghost business while minding my Holy Ghost business if you are a willing vessel for the Lord, he will use you mightily. Amen. It makes no difference as to how you feel. It makes no difference to what circumstances you're in. It makes no difference where you've come from. It doesn't make any difference of your social, economic, and I dare say your political status, if, if I can go there. If God, thank you, if God chooses to use you, he will use you. Amen. Oh, it's just done started already, Lord Jesus. 
Mm. Hey, glory. If you are open to a move of God in your life, it is no secret what he will do. Glory. Hallelujah. Hmm. So we're going to look at some of the people in the Bible who were busy doing something else when God moved upon them. Now I've, I've got to I've got to qualify that. Now <laughs> God doesn't use lazy people. Amen. Amen. Now let that sink in. Now I, I I've been saying since 1973. I mean to really know that I know that I know that I'm saved. Now I'm not talking about when I was baptized. Now I was listening. I was listening at uh, Bishop's sermon earlier uh, today before I came uh, to church. I've, I've been to church. Ooh, Jesus! I've been to church twice today, and I've heard two sermons. I, I heard a sermon this morning at 19th Street, and I heard I heard Bishop's sermon today uh, about uh, Jesus uh, coming to the disciples uh, in the boat, walking on the, the water. And then I heard one at 19th Street before that one. I went from one sermon to the other. So I'm telling you, my cup's overflowing uh, this morning. And so as I think about the fact that nobody that Jesus chose to do anything was lazy. Now, let me give you some background, just a little background of this, and then we'll, we'll move forward. Now, Moses, in his younger days, thought he was the likely choice to lead Israel. All right? But when he thought he was ready, there was a whole lot of arrogance. Mm -hmm. There was a whole lot of pride because he was in the house of Pharaoh. He knew he was Jewish descended. He knew this. But Pharaoh's daughter raised him as her own. She knew how she got him out of that basket. She knew the kind of blanket he was wrapped up in when she got him. I'm sure mm, he, she told him the story. I'm sure that he got a reprieve from Pharaoh not to be killed because Pharaoh's daughter took a liking to him. You know, now I don't have anything scripturally to back it up other than the fact that, uh, that, that Moses lived. But then Moses, when, when he killed an Egyptian and then turned around and tried to reason with the Hebrew and the Hebrew basically, to use, a, to use a, a slang phrase, the Hebrew called him out. To David, he said he dropped a dime on him and called him out for how he had killed the Egyptian the day before. Moses had to take flight and run and hide. So now... Here it is, 80 years old. He's on the backside of the desert. He's in exile. But he's busy tending the sheep, the flock of his father-in-law. And God decides to use him. Now that he's more humble. Amen. Now that he's busy doing something else. Now that he's able to be in a place where God can use him, he's busy doing something. And God takes those skills that he's now using to lead his father-in-law's flock. And he's going to use those skills and the tools that he has to lead the people of God. David. was busy doing something else when he was anointed king. And he was anointed king while he was very young. He had a lot of growing to do. 
And after he was anointed by Saul, he didn't go right in and take over as king. He went back to doing just what he was doing before the horn of oil was poured over his head. Went right back to tending his father's flock. And when the Philistines came against Israel and King Saul was scared and all the Israelites were scared, by this time, teenage David, who'd been tending his father-in-law's flock, about to sneeze, devil you a liar, tending his father-in-law's flock, looked at all the folks and the Israelites who were scared of this giant and said, what's wrong with y'all? We serve a mighty God. Now, you know I'm paraphrasing. He said, somebody take him on. We're going to take him on. I can take him. And you know the story. And from that moment on, Saul took him into his house. But he still wasn't the king. Gideon. He was anything but the epitome of somebody showing strength. Gideon was minding his own business. Threshing wheat down in a wine press. That's a hole where you pour grapes in. Wheat you thresh up on a hill where the wind can catch the chaff and take the light chaff away and then the heavy wheat kernels can drop to the ground. He's down in a wine press. Everything falling on his head. And then the angel of death comes to him and tells him, Stand up, you mighty man of valor. Now he looks like anything but a mighty man of valor. He's looking like a coward, but God saw something in him that he couldn't see in himself. It reminds me that the scripture tells us that God's strength is made great in our weakness. Because it's not us that does the fighting, but God that fights our battles. Now let's look at this lady by the name of Ruth. Here she was, not even a Jewish woman. Ruth was from the country of Moab. But she had married a Jewish man. And her husband had died. But she followed her mother-in-law, who was Jewish. And her husband had died. And when Naomi decided to go back to her country and her kin people, and Naomi went back and Ruth followed, and Ruth's other sister-in-law followed because her husband was also dead, and Naomi blessed them and said, go on back to your country. Don't follow me. And the other woman went back. But Ruth said, I'll follow you and your people shall be my people. And your God shall be my God. Amen. Little did she know by making that declaration and making her business to follow the same God as Naomi would put her in the lineage of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords while she was minding her own business. Let's look at another woman you all know. A woman by the name of Mary who was busy being faithful and virtuous. And she got a message from heaven while she was busy 
being faithful, that she was going to conceive and bear a son. And she was perplexed, she said, because I've been with no man. And she realized when the Spirit told her that what was going to be conceived in her was of the Holy Ghost. Now she needed comfort because she knew that folks would look at her strange. She knew that folks would be gossiping. You know folks talk. She needed comfort and so she went to visit cousin Elizabeth who in her old age was in family way. And when she got to Elizabeth's house and Elizabeth heard the greeting, the child inside Elizabeth's womb began to leap and caused Elizabeth to prophesy. And before Mary could say anything else, Elizabeth began to prophesy and tell her just how blessed she was. And then Mary was all right and she began to sing as she went back her way, my soul doth magnify the Lord, all because she was minding her Holy Ghost business. Let's look at this man by the name of Saul, whose name will be changed to Paul. He was busy pursuing, persecuting Christians. Even to the point where the first deacon of the church, he held the coats while they were stoning him to death. Even went so far as to get warrants to go and kill more Christians in Damascus. And so he was minding his personal business, but then on the road to Damascus, God had a Holy Ghost appointment for him and turned his life upside down and he became one of those who was a chief Christian and ended up being a missionary and an apostle to the Gentiles. You are never too far away for God to use you for his glory. You are never too far away for God to reach you if he wants to use you. There is a gospel song that I like that says if he has to reach way down, Jesus will pick you up if he has to reach way down. When you stop to think about where you have come from and now God finds you able to be used for his glory, it takes you to a whole new level. There are times when you think that you are at a handicap, yet God will step in and use you greatly. What you might think is a handicap is somebody's handy up. Ooh, where did that come from? Woo! Jesus. God will use you greatly. Your test will be a testimony and will reach somebody that you never thought could be reached. He will affirm and reaffirm something that he has told you many times over. And when it does, it's like recharging and rekindling the fire. I can't really explain what's going on right now. I feel more charged, and I was telling my sister the other day, I feel more charged right now than when I first got saved and when I first got filled with the Holy Ghost. I don't know what happens. Sometimes I feel like I could pick up, uh, pick up a cord that's not plugged in and power up half a city because that's how I'm feeling right now in the Lord. You see, some things have happened and sometimes while I'm minding my own business, God shows up and shows out. 
I can't really explain why other than God is God all by himself and he doesn't need any help. But the fact that sometimes he chooses to use me in the process and I say, anyway, you bless me, Lord, I'll be satisfied. Yesterday, while I was minding my own Holy Ghost business, I decided I wanted to stop and get another set of earbuds. One to keep at home and one to keep in the car. So, I stopped on the way back from the Hagerstown Roundhouse Museum. I said, I need to pick up my new um, Sam's Club card anyway, so I'll stop in Sam's, get my new card, and I'll look to see if they have another set of earbuds for this iPad Mini. So I walk in and tell the person at the door I wanted to pick up my permanent card. And they directed me over to the counter and I went to the counter. And then I walked on back and I looked around and I found, I found a wireless set of iPads. I really didn't want a wireless one. I wanted one that I could plug in just like I have it plugged in now to, to be uh, charged up while I'm using it. But I said, oh, well, I'll go ahead and get these. And when I paid for them and walked out, the person at the front who checks off everything with that little handheld scanner, she had turned her back. And then when she finished, she was getting ready to walk away. And I said, excuse me, excuse me, I'm on the way out. And she turned around and I saw this lady had on a cross and I caught the glimpse of the cross and I held out my receipt. And since I didn't have a bag for my thing, I just had the little box with the, the ear pods in them. I held out the receipt and I held out the box, but we couldn't see the barcode scan on the box. And I turned it over. I said, oh, there it is. And so she scanned that and she looked up in my eyes and she laid her hand on my chest. And I looked in her eyes and this lady didn't know me from Adam. I didn't know her, hadn't seen her before. And she began to prophesy. And as she prophesied, she confirmed things that I had shared with my sister, with some of the saints on the Zoom meeting, with my bishop, and almost verbatim some things I had talked about during the week with my sister. And she began to say everything, and I'm almost, I'm trying to quote it as best I can, exactly like she said it because it was almost word for word, some of it, that was said to me. Earlier in the week, it's almost the same thing. She said, you have been through so much, but everything that the devil has tried against you is over. And you are now in a new place in the Lord. And what got me was when she said, you are walking in a new dimension and at a new level. And my, you can ask my sister, we've been talking about that new dimension and new level. She'll tell you that's a conversation we had and nobody else knew. And she said these words, and I had quoted this verse earlier that day. This lady didn't know me. And she said, and by your stripes, by his stripes, we are healed. And then she said, and everything that the devil has thrown at you, God is going to use for his glory. And she also said, you have an abundant blessing about to be poured out upon you. And you are walking in victory after victory. And then she said, you are sowing seeds. Now that's a conversation I've had several weeks in a row. 
And I mentioned that in the sermon last week, and I heard that, and I went into praying in the Spirit, and so did she. And then after that, everything stopped, just like it had started. And she turned and walked away, and I walked out the door. And as I got in my car, I said, Lord, what just happened? And I was minding my Holy Ghost business when that came about. She didn't know me from Adam, and I didn't know her. But the Lord knew the timing was right. And I was so full, and my cup began to run over, and I began to think about there is no secret what God can do or what he will do. And I began to think of places in the scripture where God spoke word and confirmed word. And I said, Lord, I said, this is the kind of thing that happened early in my days of knowing you. This is the kind of thing, I said, that Azusa Street revival that I saw, Lord, it's happening, it's happening, it's happening. I know it now, it's happening. And Lord, this is only the beginning. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Because your people, if they are called by your name and will humble themselves and seek your face, you will hear from heaven and you will heal their land. Lord, any way you bless me, I'll be satisfied. Some of you out there, you're waiting for things. Keep your trust in God because the wait is just about over. Amen. Your Amen. victory is on the way. Amen. Some of you have cried tears in anguish. He's about to turn your mourning into dancing. Amen. Go ahead, Pastor. Let it go. Oh. Don't hold it back. Mm. <laughs> Yay! He's coming to your house to bless you. Don't worry about the numbers in the house. Worry about the fact that he's still in the house, he's blessing the house, and there's victory coming. Be thankful for that. Be faithful. The Lord says be faithful because you're about to see your coronation for being the ruler over many. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, Neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has in store for you. Get a bigger saucer. Get a bigger saucer. Because, the, oh, this is what I'm seeing now. Because the saucer is not going to be big enough to hold the overflow that he's about to pour into some of you. You better receive it. You better receive it because it's coming. You better receive it. Stay in the word. Stay in the word. And the key thing is also keep praising. Keep rejoicing. Don't be afraid to praise him. If you're self-conscious about the praising, mm, you better get over it because you're hindering your blessing. If you're self-conscious about worship, you better get over it because you're hindering your blessing. If you're lax in your praying, you better get over it because if you don't talk to him, that's praying. He can't bless you. So get in a good conversation with Jesus regularly from your heart. What I heard Bishop say this morning, and he was, he was referring to Billy Graham, who said, most of the people in America that attend churches are not saved. Amen, and y'all have heard me say that most people in churches are, are, are just there. They don't have the relationship with the Lord. And that's been my passion in ministry ever since I really came to know Jesus. 
is to reach church folk who are going through the ritual but don't have the relationship. Folks, time is winding up. You've got to get that relationship before the mainspring in the clock breaks. Did you hear what I just said? Get the relationship with the Lord before the mainspring in the clock breaks and time stops and the trumpet blows. Because it's going to happen, because one day he's coming. Real soon. So make it your Holy Ghost business to be focused on him. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these things will be added unto you. I was telling somebody the other day, they were saying, you're not teaching right now? No. I said, but I'm busier now than I was when I was teaching last year every day. Amen. I've had more stuff to do for the Lord in these last three weeks since the teachers went back to school. More stuff to do for God. I'm wondering, oh Lord, if they call me for a teaching assignment now, I don't know what I'm going to do. Because I'm busy. Yeah, I'm busy for the Lord right now. So whatever I, whatever I need, God's going to supply it. So am I worried? No. No, I'm at peace. Because God's got it all under control. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you that each day I get up, I can make my business your business. Help these people, Lord, your people, make your business their business. Help us to keep self out of the way. And every day we get up, Lord, help us to mortify a little more flesh, put a little more flesh under the blood, and a little more you live. So that when that day comes, when you say, all right, y'all can come on home now. We can just step out of mortality and step into immortality. Help us to model for the youth what a relationship looks like, that should look like. Help us to plant the right seeds for future generations. In Jesus' name. And Lord, that's my Holy Ghost story. And I am going to stick to it. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen.